This episode of Cinema Sins is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. We here at Cinema Sins understand the importance of keeping online identities safe, and Surfshark knows how to do just that. By encrypting all the information sent between our devices and the internet, they give confidence to their users, just like us. Not only does Surfshark protect you from cyber evildoers, it allows users to make it seem like they are anywhere else in the world with just a few clicks. This is a great feature for those of you who might want to view a show you can't get in your area, and it only takes a few clicks. That's right, US peeps, we can finally send Britcoms. Surfshark is also in incredibly secure. Their clean web feature will block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, which essentially removes all sin from your browsing experience. If you're not masking your IP address so that you can safely surf the web with sweet anonymity, well, you do not know what you are missing. Surfshark is ready to give you a sinless surfing experience. And with one account, Surfshark works on unlimited devices. Head to the video description for the link and enter the code CINEMASINS to get 83% off, plus three extra months for free. Trying to spice up your logo by adding a reference to the movie I'm about to watch instead of spicing up your movie by adding a reference to the logo I just watched. Wait, don't do that! Also, I'm just gonna say it and take the heat right away. <clears throat> there is no way Schroeder's piano sounds this much like a grand piano. It's a toy piano, and toy pianos have a specific, recognizable, and annoying sound. A moon! Um, Swiss cheese! No? Oh, a visual representation of my hopes and dreams contained in spheres of possibility slowly fall into the ground and melt away? Yeah, I guessed it! What sort of an asshole would throw a snowball at a bird? And if you tell me it fell from the sky, I will blame God, as you do. Letting your dog sleep outside during a snowstorm. This tiny, useless fence. Sure, this works, but only once. Also, sleeping with your hockey stick. Ah, uh, Beethoven. It's as if none of the children understand alarm clocks and how they function. You don't relax back into bed. You play music that explodes and anger deep inside you like fireflies by Owl City. No school today! But yes, school later, right? Or is it common practice to chuck your books in the bin whenever school is canceled? Come on, Charlie Brown! This movie wants us to believe that Charlie Brown is the least popular kid, but it starts off with the entire neighborhood of children showing up at his house just after 7 a.m., fully ready to adventure and play. Today's the day. I can feel it. Is it the day that you heat the entire neighborhood after leaving the f***ing front door open? A kite? Today? In the middle of winter? I mean, do kites have to be flown in a specific season? I'm pretty sure the main prerequisite is wind. You blockhead! That's phrenologist. What kind of a person tries to fly a kite in the middle of winter? Moments ago, he helped turn your triple axle into a quadruple, and the audience loved it. This hardly seems like an offense worthy of character assassination. You will never get that kite to fly. But he just... Did. So successfully, in fact, that he propelled a net full of children across a frozen pond. How is anyone forgetting that? It just happened! Even with claws, dogs notoriously overestimate the amount of traction they have on pretty much every surface. So I call bullshit on this sudden acceleration. Isn't he the cutest thing? He also just flung you across the ice and into a snowbank for getting too close to him. But yeah, sure, his visual appeal is what we want to focus on, rather than physical overreactions that could lead to injury. Watch the curls! And this, friends, is the only interesting fact the movie reveals about this female character. Her concern for curls. Woodstock is clearly still on the Zamboni after the entire group jumped over him. Then, after Pigpen's puff of dirt, Woodstock suddenly finds himself as some sort of bird dongle to make Snoopy compatible with the blanket. Now I'm willing to believe in magic, but using sorcery in opposition to a smooth playing surface is cheating and will not be allowed. Also, this tiny Zamboni really confuses this reality for me. I could barely believe that the entire neighborhood of children woke at precisely 7 a.m. and descended upon the frozen pond without adult supervision, and now we have a tiny goddamn bird on a functional Zamboni. Last time we saw this kite, it was in the tree, but still intact. So this destruction was caused by whatever method you chose for retrieving the kite. I do not feel sorry for you. The joke is that Charlie Brown is so bad at baseball, his team has lost by hundreds of runs. But there is no way the score of a Little League baseball game should ever be this lopsided, even if you happen to live in a universe without the mercy rule. If nothing else, the coach should be doing whatever the f*** it takes to prevent these kids from being down by a hundred runs. My short list is cheating, fighting, and taking hostages. Snoopy takes the snow, creates a snowball baseball, and hands it to Charlie Brown. This will be thrown home, hit, and sent back at such velocity it will remove clothing, pierce a snow person, destroy a second snowman, and dislodge a wooden slat on a fence. Peanut snow is f***ing dangerous. And I now believe more than ever that chucking Sally into the snowbank earlier should have killed her. I just find it odd that Woodstock would go through the trouble of creating all the snowmen and add all the meticulous details to their snow people's bodies, but avoid a nose and mouth. I think that tells us a lot about its psyche. <laughs> and now we know that Snoopy exhales helium. You know how valuable he would be? Anyway, I think I have to stop trying to understand the rules of this world and just, um, enjoy? Oh, number one, the heater. 
The brown bullet. In my experience, the heater and the brown bullet is generally associated with a hole number two. I hope he loves maybe he. As long as he's a I just hope he'll have he would know nothing of Assuming gender. <laughs> Man's best friend. Kick the fucking dog off the bed. It's a dog. Okay, sure. A helium dog. But scoot Snoopy to the floor and assert your dominance, CB. She doesn't look like a goalie to me. Fine, but what are you thinking then? Center? Winger? She's pretty. The male gaze. She's not that pretty. Jealousy. <gasps> Love for psychology. Well, I say canine or human. If you want to learn this bad, you should be allowed to learn. And you certainly shouldn't be thrown in a dumpster with used boards, because used boards in a dumpster almost always have nails. Lucy's being a dick to Snoopy and his intellectual curiosity. Also, everyone in the classroom is familiar with Snoopy and apparently didn't allow Charlie Brown to take care of his own pet. Or worse, Charlie Brown saw Snoopy being hauled out of the room and didn't attempt to intervene. This movie is dark, man. I'm looking at size, scale, wind speed, and position relative to the sun, but... For the life of me, I can't tell how the f that plane didn't crash right into that brick wall. I call bullshit on this pencil having the velocity needed to fall off the desk and roll back four rows, simply based on the wind resistance that would have to be overcome by all these feathers. Hi, I'm Brown Charlie. That? No one will be seated while Snoopy and Woodstock learn how to operate a typewriter. Oh. Okay, fine, this is goddamn adorable. Actual footage of our writing staff revising script for our videos somehow makes its way into this animation. Impressively, Woodstock is one of the founding members of the Prometheus School of Flapping Away From Things. It was a dark and stormy night. Narration and reading and stormy night cliché. <laughs> Movie makes absolutely no justification for this singular bolt of karmic lightning, leaving us to assume that Snoopy is also Thor. I guess some houses have a child-sized lane between the bush and the house. You know, for occasions such as this. Can this f***ing kid not close a door? Well, dogs just can't do that. Even helium dogs. The key is keeping a low profile. For now, we just keep our distance. I love it when kid movies go full-on educational. Just think about how many little ones are watching this and learning how to perfect the art of stalking. Awesome! Oh, you're in love! Or agoraphobic. Confidently positioning yourself this close to propeller blades. If she was nothing and I was nothing, I could talk to her. Sometimes I dig into existential metaphors with glee, but Charlie Brown is essentially rambling about his fear of powerful women. Well, I'm going to save us all the collective eye rolls, skip the conversation, and send the scene for wasting time. How come my face doesn't make you nervous? Making your valid point with violence. Nickels, nickels, nickels. What a beautiful sound. I can't tell what's more frustrating in this scene. Lucy's horrible advice about being a winner to attract a love interest or perpetuating the lie that Nick Nickels are a desirable coin. Step one, forget everything you ever knew about yourself. Ironically, the first step in becoming a winner is also the first step in joining a cult. <laughs> Snoopy's reaction to the placement of this sword suggests that he has something to lose, thereby answering the unasked question of whether or not he has been neutered. I gotta slug you. See kids, the moral of this moment is that when you are embarrassed, you can redirect the flood of emotions into a violent attack on an animal to feel better. Get hot water! Get some disinfectant! Get some Everyone in 2020. If you like this, wait for the encore! Not reading the room. What? Kids gotta learn someday. <laughs> I've always envied someone who can check their wrist moles for the time. I have to wear a watch. Someone on the production team went through all the trouble of writing a coherent article about the talent show, but gave up right here and decided to segue into something about a student council election. Nobody reads a school paper anyhow. Everyone behind the door is reading the paper, right? Of course they are. They say there's no such thing as bad publicity. But in this case, the publicity was good publicity. The article is complimenting Charlie Brown's behavior and how it benefited his sister. The author said he was her saving grace. Maybe Linus and CB should actually read the article before assuming the contents were bad publicity. I mean, we'd send them for reading, but still. I can't cook cupcakes. Baking. You bake cupcakes. Is words that hard? Toasting cupcakes. That sounds good, Chuck. No, that just sounds like you will have all the driest of mouths. Okay, but what asshole gave a beagle a bag of holding? This incredibly aggressive, um, dance? Seemingly aimed directly at the back of her head. Wearing sandals that aren't sized correctly, which leaves the little toe beans hanging off the front. Let's be clear, if a beagle lovingly hands over a cupcake that was just pulled out of some hairy pocket of its body, do not eat it. I appreciate the movie staying true to the source material, but why would he be imagining the doghouse as a plane instead of just imagining a plane as a plane? A little red-haired girl. My lucky day. Her name is written on the piece of paper, right? So why is he still referring to her, not by her name? I can't afford a mortgage. What if I'm put into escrow? <laughs> no one knows what escrow means. It's not like 
even a real word. When you come into possession of someone else's property without their knowledge, and then instead of returning that property, you keep it as a memento while you obsess over that person, yes, you're creepy. I think I know how to become her hero. We don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. There are a lot of confusing things that happen in the Peanuts universe, and one of them is certainly the enthusiastic abandonment of lunch to view test scores. There are only 14 names on this sheet, but there are definitely more than 14 kids in this school, so is this the top 14? Who the f*** does the top 14? There will be an all-school assembly Monday morning to celebrate our illustrious classmate, Charlie Brown. Oh, just f*** right off with that nonsense. This horrendous coverage of the five hole. Does anyone know where I can find Leo's toy store? What kind of asshole walks into a library and yells out their book of interest to anyone present? Hmm, where is it? Better question, where is the librarian that would surely have choice words for the little shits making a mess out of their organized books? And how does the library have such rickety shelves that are this easily unsettled by a small child retrieving a book? Well, I guess I'll just send that and a total lack of adult supervision anywhere in this universe. Being flexible enough to listen to your toenails growing. And it was the day before. This scene terrifies me. Nearly every student turns into a lemming and falls at Chuck's feet. This is how cults start. And you may think I'm being over the top here, but a kid will watch this movie and have a really skewed view of book reports. I mean, cults. Okay, show's over. Clear it out. But first, get some help breaking down the set of bleachers that these children have somehow managed to erect in the living room. I'd been annoyed by this overpinned room for several minutes and decided to let it go. But thumbtacks in wooden windowsills? That is too far. You have to exert quite a bit of effort and probably use a hammer to get those things into the frame. Ah. Can I please have Charlie Brown come to the stage? Charlie Brown knew this gathering was for him, so why would he park his ass in the middle of the row? Can a brother and sister get a divorce? Conditional love. One moment I'm the hero, the next I'm the goat. Charlie doesn't clarify if he thinks being greatest of all time is a step down or step up from being a hero. Charlie Brown took it upon himself to complete the report for the both of you. Or at least that's what the movie wants us to believe when in fact his opening line reads, This is my book report, which clearly omits the intended partnership. The scene really highlights how many ex machina moments are in this movie, and just how much Deus hates Charlie Brown. Snoopy wipes his goggles, we see the white of his eyes, and then when the gunk flies free, the goggles are tinted again. This annoying discrepancy has happened every time we have a Red Baron sequence, and I've been keeping track of them all. No tint, tint. No tint, tint. No tint, tint. At first it was annoying, but then I realized that it was the only thing that made the Red Baron sequence as interesting for me. Like a sick game. So thank you, Ace Snoopy, for giving my cold heart something to enjoy. I guess we're letting him get away with the trespassing because he's a dog, but Snoopy has just hopped into a bathtub with an unsuspecting child. Maybe we need to rethink exactly what kind of anthropomorphic animal behavior is acceptable. Snoopy is so deep in character right now that I'm not entirely sure he didn't just kill that kid. I mean, the kid doesn't get back up, so at a minimum, he has to be unconscious, right? Also, are they caroling after Christmas? Because the movie starts with a snow day and ends with summer vacation, so this was clearly the spring semester. Do grade schools have semesters? Whatever. It's the one after Christmas. That's all that matters. Why the f*** does he have a ladder? Well, uh, actually, let me just say that I have years of experience with cuts. But That's I'm great! Pretty sure this kid has been the hiring manager at every job I have ever applied for. And Charlie Brown has been their top candidate because of his years of experience. Flying a kite isn't for everyone. It takes a certain type of person. Charlie Brown being that video you always end up at after searching fun springtime hobbies and then clicking just a little too far down those recommends. I know I'm criticizing a dog writing a book here, but this war story veered quickly into a cliched love story and never pulled up. And this wouldn't be all bad if it didn't use up almost 15 minutes of runtime. Teaching kids that you can go through a glass window unscathed as long as there is cake on the other side. Including this shot of the Red Baron landing his damaged plane just so we don't think that Woodstock just straight up killed someone. Just saying, don't wore out your movie if you can't handle the realities of war. A dog that flies? She's exasperated by a pretend flying dog when a real dog is writing a novel on a goddamn typewriter. I really am having a difficult time gauging what I'm supposed to be impressed by in this world. Ow! Attempted murder. <gasps> Whoa, look at that! Is that Snoopy? I envy the vision of youth. No squinting or moving things closer or further away to read. They just open their eyes and zoom a half mile away to a tiny speck on the horizon and see a fucking dog. A little dirt never hurt anyone. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how you get a UTI, but if you say so. <laughs> I just want to point out that the red-haired girl is at the door of the bus but doesn't board the bus for several minutes while Chuck makes his way there. Did she see something on the ground and stop to examine it? Did a small bubble from another dimension appear around her, momentarily freezing her in place? What was she doing? And why does the movie think that we won't notice her entire life pausing while Chuck catches up? The whole world seems to be conspiring against me. Despite what you may believe, I was once a child, so I feel for the kid. But he thought the fastest way to school was through a carnival, and that the fastest way through a carnival was through these games. 
It's like hopping on I-95 heading into Manhattan during rush hour on a Friday and being surprised that there's traffic. The conspiracy isn't against you, you're part of the conspiracy. Also, this sequence is fun to watch, and I'm sure it greatly entertains the kiddos, but the adults will remember that the overhead shot at the carnival indicated several ways through the Chaos Carnival. So, while the middle lane is very busy, the outer lane is not, and Chuck should be well on his way to his victim. I mean target. I mean obsession. Deus kite machina! Charlie Brown is flying a kite? I refuse to believe that this sort of thing ever stopped kids in their tracks. Even in the 50s when the only toys they had to play with were rocks. It must feel pretty great being Charlie Brown right about now. The reality is that Charlie Brown should already be feeling pretty great for having a long-standing friendship with a kid like Linus. So many characters seem to have conditional love for Chuck, but Linus is there at every turn. And the movie should amplify that relationship rather than the hollow pursuit of finding your value in a crush that has only spoken a few words to you. I'm proud to be your little sister. Because I'm a little sh and you only make me happy when it's convenient for me. The interesting part is if anything happens to me and Hicks doesn't get his letter, he's gonna be really pissed off and he's gonna come down here and see you because you're the mailman. Now that the kite-eating tree is sleeping for the winter, we have nothing to fear. But fear itself. I may have had troubles in the past flying a kite, and I may have never won a baseball game. You don't think I got feelings? You don't think I'm sensitive? <gasps> the new kid is coming! Oh. We wasted the good surprise on you. Behold the future. I'm talking money hand over fist. A typewriter. Uh, a self-correcting IBM Selectric 2 electric typewriter with patented high-speed type ball. They're not just for women anymore. I go. 11 o'clock. She's lining up to drop her load on that minesweeper. Fighters? Yep, yeah, 109's up our starboard. I'm on the bomber. Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, how's the peeping? This is the face of failure. You really failed. You failed, you failed, you failed. You failed, you failed, you failed, you failed, you failed. You failed, you failed, you failed, you failed. What are you doing? I'm on a horse. <laughs> you know, Charlie Brown. You are a waste of life and you should give up. You call that dancing? Oh.